everyone welcome to today's video um in this video i'm going to announce the winners from the art giveaway um so yeah that's what we're going to do first in a minute and uh secondly we are very busy at the moment uh with getting a new apartment to live so if all goes well we might going to move out of here in the next month so I'm not sure how much time I will have to complete videos in between that time, but I once we're settled there, I'll be very busy again for you guys. So that's that. So let's go get ourselves our winners. I'm not going to look like the no names are up, so I'm not cheating here or whatever. This is going as fair as it can get. So, first name is going to be Matt the Wild Cat. And then the second name and the final one. Smiling Snarler. So if you're Matt the Wild Cat or Smiling Snarler, then congratulations, you won yourself a postcard sized artwork which you can request from me. It can be anything, it can be your favorite pet or your favorite character, your own original character. Uh, I'll go message you guys and um, you get back at me with whatever you wish is. And then of course, where do I have them? Both of you will win each a Faber-Castell eraser pencil and a HB graphite pencil. So, well, that's out of the way. And, well, I have a little bit of extras for you guys, I could have ended here, but I also did a little video on um, which sculpting materials I'm using for my sculpture projects, because soon I hope I can squeeze the first video in next week, or maybe at, uh, during the weekend, depends how busy we're going to be with the new housing and stuff, but yeah i'll try i'll try but uh yeah i'm going to go do a small sculpting series and this is the little um intro to it like what materials i use i often get questions like uh what kind of clay do you use what kind of um, materials do i need like tools and stuff so i'm going to go try and explain as best as i can in the next video clip that comes up to this, obviously. <laughs> okay, so enjoy! So in today's video I am going to explain what kind of materials I use to make sculptures with and um, my techniques and uh, the whole procedure. So uh, there are a lot of people who qu uh, ask me questions on Facebook like yeah, what do I need? What materials do I need? How do I go about creating sculptures? And uh, is it hard and all those things? Well, it can be hard, especially when you're starting out. So when you're starting out, I advise to start very simple, not too big, not too many details or too difficult poses or anything like that. But yeah, I'm going to do a small series after this one, creating a small fun little sculpture in steps that you can do with me, so everything will become even more clear if this video hasn't answered all your questions. And of course, you can always ask me uh, whatever is on your mind in the comment section, and I'll do my best to answer them. So, um, the first thing I do when I make a sculpture commission or just a free piece um, I make a sketch because I need the right measurements uh, so everything is 
uh, quite in proportions because if you don't do this you might end up with a very big head and a small body or the other way around or your sculpture will tip over all the time because you haven't really planned out how you're going to position the legs or if it needs a base or anything like that. Uh, I have a little example here of a current commission I'm working on. I hope she doesn't mind that I'm showing uh, this. So um, I usually make two sketches. The first one is of the pose that is uh, desired. And yeah, this is a fantasy feline for uh, Lunuin on the A of her Luthiel. And yeah, she requested this pose. But um, the things I note down here are some of the details, like this character has uh, different colors in nighttime and daytime, but she wanted the daytime version, so I noted it down. Uh, I note down the measurements. Uh, she wanted a 6 inch and I always measure from chest to bum to get it more accurate because some characters have tails, some do not, some have long necks, some do not. So yeah, measuring from chest to bum is more easier for me to keep things on track and to do it a bit fair. Like if a person has a long tail and a long neck they end up with a very big sculpture while somebody who is just a fun cute little plumpy bear has a very small one or something like that and yeah some other minor details I just put there and but the one I work from to create my frame I just always make a very basic pose so I can get the length of for all four of the legs more easier, more accurate, because in this pose it's a bit hard to measure if they're all the same length. So yeah, uh, making a basic pose is the easier way to go about it. So yeah, then I just uh, draw out the, the frame I'm going to make, so I can just use this as a blueprint when I'm going to make my frame and then uh, you just take like a wire this is not the right one because it's far too thin and you just kind of like lay it over your sketch and you're going to bend it accordingly so it ends up quite accurate that way so this is the first step once you have your sketch all planned out, you can start creating your frame. And you have several options to what you want to use for more professional use. You may want to use aluminum wire because it's not staining and it's sturdy. But with every kind of wire, be careful because it can suddenly uncoil and you don't want this in your eye or whatever. So always be cautious or if you want to be super cautious, wear safety glasses. Um, so yeah, you've got aluminum wire, you've got them in different cautious, you've got them in thicker versions, in thinner versions, but it's quite expensive. So if you're on a low budget, you can do just as well with plain old iron wire. They also come in different sizes, like super thin and thicker. For the main frame, it, I advise to use a thicker thread because then your your armature will be a lot sturdier, will not bend as easy. These thin ones I usually use to wrap around legs or something to give an extra hold so the clay will grip and will not slide off. Um, so yeah, that's about the wires. Once you've got your wired skeleton made, you can have you can choose among a couple of options. I usually cover my entire sculpture with aluminum foil and then use a hot glue gun to glue all the parts together so they don't fall off. In the past I used masking tape to keep all the foil together, but I at some point the tape would start peeling off or get all sticky or when half was baked the other 
half where the tape was exposed would get loose and all that so it was a mess and I found this was far more easier so yeah I advise to use a hot glue gun when you're just doing aluminum foil also um, using aluminum foil is just to bulk up your sculpture so the more you bulk it up the less clay you need to use and since clay is very costly and quite expensive you don't want to use tons of that stuff so you want to bulk up with this so yeah you can save yourself some clay for a next project other thing you can do is using epoxy sculpt or uh, in, in the United States they have something called magic sculpt I believe but they don't retail those here or they don't sell those here so I have to do with epoxy and this is air drying clay it dries super hard and you can choose to reinforce your uh, armatures with these as well but I hardly ever do that because I'm impatient and I want to wait till it's dry I just want to smack clay on it as soon as my armature is done. And you can also choose to use brass rods. They come in round and in square. These are the square ones and you can choose to, uh, to use this to extra reinforce your uh, armature wherever that's needed. And then we have this, yeah, uh, I forgot what it's called, but uh, it's handy to make like thinner things with like feathers or wings or whatever. So that's another option you can use. And once your armature is done it should look something like this. It's not completely done yet because I need to reinforce legs. But yeah this is the armature for Luthiel. And as you can see I've only used wire and uh, aluminum foil glued together with a lot of hot glue and it is strong, it stands, it doesn't tip over when you move it around and it's most important, you just need to make sure that your armature is sturdy, that it can carry the weight of the clay and anything else you might add and of course that in the end it will stand, that it will not fall over because when it falls over it's game over, you've got a broken piece and you don't want that. So. Moving on to the clay, um, the clay that I use all the time, actually, yeah, all the time, is a mixture of Super Sculpey and Sculpey Firm. Uh, you could use these on their own, but I find uh, Super Sculpey is the pink one, as you can see. But I find that Super Sculpey is too soft on its own and especially in hot weather it just becomes goo uh, but it does hold detail very well it's very easy to pl uh, to ply and um, it doesn't take much conditioning to get it started and to work with on the other hand uh, Sculpey Firm is very hard it's very hard to condition you need to put some effort and time to get it as smooth and easy to work with as super sculpey but firm is a lot stronger when it's baked and uh, super sculpey is a lot more fragile on its own so I thought back in the day why not take the best out of both worlds and mix them. I usually mix them in a ratio of 40% um, Super Sculpey and 60% of the Sculpey Firm and then you get yourself yeah pretty pliable stuff. It doesn't take much to condition once you've got it all mixed up and yeah it might be a little bit more brittle than when you use Super Sculpey on its own but when you condition it good enough it's perfect to work with. So, yeah, this is the stuff I use all the time to make my sculptures with. There are other alternatives um, that, m yeah, that might be cheaper, I don't know really. But, like, if you are a bead artist or making jewelry, you might want to use smaller bricks of clay, like 
uh, Primo has a lot of colors, uh, you've got Fimo, you've got Kernit. I haven't tried these yet, so I can't tell if they are good, if they're easy to work with. But I still have to test it out sometime. And then you've got Kato Polyclay. Um, I've used this before to sculpt with. It is a whole lot harder than Super Sculpey, but it is also a whole lot tougher and stronger and it can resist pressure a bit more so but uh, my problem with this clay was, was that it is very smelly but the biggest problem was with the baking um, it uh, when I baked it random cracks would come everywhere now I heard that if you want to bake the your sculpture you, which you made with this you want to put it in a, a baking soda or something like that and that prevents it from cracking or something I haven't tried it yet but yeah that put me off a little bit of this clay and recently um, the makers of the Super Sculpey and Sculpey Firm they, they heard all the complaints about Firm being too hard on its own and Super Sculpey being too soft, so they took the idea that we all had and they created their blend of um, Firm and Super Sculpey. So I yet have to try this to see how well it goes and if it is just like my own mix of Super Sculpey and Sculpey Firm, but yeah, I'm excited to try that. It could solve me all of, uh, the problem of losing a lot of time mixing my clays and also it would cost me a whole lot less because instead of buying three bricks of these I'd have to buy three bricks of firm and three bricks, bricks of Super Sculpey so yeah that's double the cost so if this is great I'll just move on to this right away <laughs> Um, so yeah, but these two are mainly the clays that I use and then I use the air dry epoxy clay for the more fragile thinner parts to make sure that tho those will survive shipping and everything. So yeah, this is my clay to go. And now on to the tools. There are so many tools you can use. Um, I got quite some. These are actually the kind that I never really used. These were, I think, the first set I ever bought because they were that cheap and <laughs> I didn't know where to start with. But I think these are more for pottery or very big works and I hardly ever work that big. So I hardly ever use that. And yeah, and then you've got all these smaller things, these are the ones I use a bit less, well except for this one because this one I use for the epoxy uh, sculpt because that is air drying and it destroys your good material so I want to use cheap stuff for that. Um, the ones that I often use are in the first place the silicone shapers and then you'd want to use the firm one, usually it's the black ones, but it should say in the description where you buy them if they are like firm or soft. Um, we've got them in all different kind of sizes. I really like to use uh, uh, size 2 and sometimes for really small details I use uh, the size 0. But yeah, these are really nice, they give you very soft uh, strokes and um, like when you use metal tools, you can have the clay shimmer after. It doesn't happen here. You don't have that much crumbs or debris uh, when you cut into the clay with this. So yeah, I like this. It's really nice and good for smooth applications and stuff like that. And other tools I really like to use are these super fine ribbon tools. These are perfect for fleshing out and even to create details with if you use them on the side. And they're super versatile and I can't 
sculpt with that and they're just that handy. And you've got these in multiple sizes as well, like I can show you, yeah, I, I really showed you like these are ribbon tools as well, but they are, they are too big for what I need to do, so I hardly ever use them. And of course there are also other alternatives for the silicone shapers. Um, these grey ones, they are the softer version. I sometimes use them but they're not very good for detailing because you hardly see the marks you make with them because they're so soft, they go like, yeah. But they're good for smoothing things out or something like that. And you've got them in bigger sizes and well I don't think the color matters much, it's just the color of the silicone. Um, these you can also use by the way when you want to, when you're painting oils or with pastels to just smear the colors out or to move them around. So they're also very multifunctional. And then you've got a uh, rubber rubber versions as well these are a whole lot stiffer and don't leave as nice and marks as the silicon ones do but they are a lot more affordable so if you're on tight spot you can opt for these guys because they're a lot more affordable so yeah The rest I like to use some of these dental, yeah, dental tools. Some have sharp points for detailing or like flashing things out, and I like to use these flat, flatter sides to smooth things out or to flatten things. And yeah, once once you get onto a spot where you think, hmm. What do we need for this? You'll, you'll usually know what you'll need, so yeah. And then this one is also one of my favorite tools to flatten things out or yeah, make things smooth. It's And it's that cheap because it's one of those uh, Play-Doh kind of tools, plastic. And wow, it doesn't want to sharpen. That's a bit annoying, the camera, but yeah. So yeah, the silicon ones and the ribbon tools, they're like the ones I use the most out of all of them. Then I want to show you some um, uh, cheaper alternatives for like if you don't have a lot of money to spend on professional tools. When you're, st when, yeah, when you're starting out, you don't want to spend that much. You just want to give it a try and if you don't like it, not the money spent is not that much so it's not much of a waste so yeah you can do perfectly with like these uh, plastic play-doh thingies maybe you even have some left from your childhood or then these will do the perfect job as well like some have points where you can do details with and others have flatter shapes or like rakes where you can make patterns with and all that so yeah if you don't have a lot of money these could do the job for you perfectly and also you could look around in your house see what you can find to use like I heard people who just started out using pins oh god it doesn't want to It's really bad, but yeah, needles. Okay, I'll go see if I can make this thing sharper because it's out of focus. There we go. So yeah, like I said before, needles, they could do fine to get little details in and everything. That cheap, you probably have one laying around. And if not, you can use uh, toothpicks. They could do the job perfectly well, but I guess they snap easier than needles, but yeah. It's also an option. Um, if you are a girl or a woman, you probably have one of these laying around hairpins. Um, you could use them 
as detailing thingies but look the end is also a very perfect um, ribbon tool so yeah here you go you got yourself a very inexpensive ribbon tool um, yeah and then there are these uh, meat sticks you can also use they have this pointy pointy thing where you can do details with and the flat spatula to do the flatting stuff with so yeah go look around your house if you're just starting out and you don't want to spend too much money you probably have something laying around that could do the job oh and I really hate how the camera is being an ass today <laughs> Because it just doesn't want to stay into focus. And if you're a bit creative and you still don't want to spend too much and you have a bit of clay lying around or iron wire, you can make your own tools. Like I have done here. Here I used that Fimo Puppin clay that I hate so much and I, I wanted to burn it but <laughs> I ended up just trashing it because it was so horribly brittle and hard to work with it even costed me a lot of energy to take to make these ones with it but yeah I have to say they are quite flexible though after baking so that's something that is really good about them but working with them was just such a pain in the butt so yeah, what I just did here is just using some of my iron wire to uh, make the ribbon ends with and then wrapped a bit around it to make it uh, stronger and then a bit of uh, aluminium foil in the middle and then a bit of clay over it. It's not very pretty but it does, does the job. So yeah, so in this manner you can create all sorts of kind of Focus! Oh, the camera is horrible today, honestly. Wow, okay. So, yeah, as you can see, he can make all sorts of things. Here, I used the hairpin again. And the other end of the hairpin I put in here, so... Yeah. Um, here, make some kind of raking tool, just with... Uh, a thicker wire and a thinner wire wrapped around it with no other end and let's see yeah here again I used a hairpin and made a little ribbon tool at the other end so yeah that's another option you can go for so even if you don't have a lot of money it doesn't have to cost too much These are some other stuff that I use, of course, a acrylic roller, roller pin. Um, you could use a wood one, but I prefer an acrylic one because you can clean this a whole lot better. And with wood, you can get that those clay bits are getting stuck between the, uh, the texture of the wood. And yeah, wood can also start to rot when it gets wet, so... I think this is a better option, a plastic or an acrylic roller. Um, I use a potato knife to cut my clay with and sometimes an exacto knife to just uh, flesh out uh, my sculptures with or if there's a bit too much clay on there I can cut it off and then once a part is finished I want to smooth it down so I use a old brush and uh, alcohol ketonatus so it's basically cleaning alcohol I've got 70% but I heard it works, works better when you have like 90% or whatever but this one works fine for me and then you just rub your piece in with that and it automatically gets rid of those little tiny flakes of clay that end up there during carving or whatever it's just to polish your piece before you start baking it so you have less um, sanding to do after and yeah I'm gonna go show a bit 
uh, a piece here, how I used to play, and um, yeah. Oops, this is also another commission I'm doing currently. Uh, a pet portrait of somebody's conure, I hope I say it right. And as you can see, I've used the um, air drying epoxy here for the feet and parts in the tail to give it a bit of reinforcement because you can touch this now and it doesn't squish anymore and yeah obviously all the grey parts are still soft but it's quite cool in here so it will take a while before my fingers will make this stuff mushy so I can hold it for a little while and in this case I work from uh, the tail up to the head with the detailing so yeah it has its hind is almost done now and I can start with the wings. I recently got a heat gun so I can um, heat up the, uh, the hind when I'm done with it so I can hold that when I want to want to continue with with the upper part. Um, in the past I would bake it first the first half and then continue with the second half so I could hold this without losing the detail. Um, of course you could do it more like a pro with a whole stand thing where you've got like a pipe going into the belly that it is hanging on to it so you can work it all at the same time but <laughs> I am not that fancy I just do it the hard way I guess. So yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Um, this one also has resin eyes. I make those myself uh, with um, two-part epoxy resin. And yeah, I'll probably do a video on how I make those. But yeah, you need to make your own molds to do that. I just uh, use a two-part um, uh, silicone uh, thingy. To, and then beads to press in and then you get yourself a mold. But I'll make a few of that in the future so you can try and make your own eyes. And yeah. Um, but if you don't want to make your own eyes and think it's too hard or it costs too much, you can also use like fancy or common beads. As long as they are wood or glass then it shouldn't be a problem because acrylic or plastic ones will melt in the oven so you need to make sure that whatever you're using as eyes is heat resistant. You can also use a epoxy sculpt to make little uh, eyes out of. Wait till they're hardened and then press them in to, um, to create your eyes. Um, yeah, after they are cast, they will look like this, little resin clear domes. And then I'll just uh, paint the back side of them with acrylic paint. And somehow, the when you press them in the clay and go bake them afterward, I guess the resin seals it. So the heat doesn't alter the acrylic paint that you paint the eyes with on the inside somehow so yeah um yeah these are pretty old but i guess i can show you uh yeah once you have painted them then they should look something like this and you can of course make them all sort of sizes like this is super small and I've got them even smaller it just depends on how big the, uh, the sculpture is but yeah those are the alternatives you can choose to use and um, I think I've covered everything so far so yeah this was pretty much it the introduction to sculpting um, pretty soon I'll just have another video up where I'll be starting to make 
a armature in real time so you can follow all the steps how it is done and it won't be as big or complex as this one it's going to be a fun little thing just to to get the feel for it, the hang of it maybe if you like it you can expand it and go a bit more um, complex with your designs but yeah uh, and afterwards I'll uh, do a step with how I uh, put clay on, how I detail it and everything and then lastly how I paint and finish the piece so yeah I hope You'll be looking forward to that and um, I thank you very much for watching again and if you liked it please leave a like and if you don't want to miss out on future videos and on the next sculpture videos then please subscribe to my channel and of course if you have any questions or suggestions then please leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer you. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.